ladies, gentlemen, and the often forgotten, but not by me, Alfa Romeo Duettos, welcome to the channel and welcome to episode 2 of Project Windfall. This episode is going to be, without a doubt, the most important in the whole series. Why is that? It's because we are going to talk about how to think like a racing driver. In episode 1, we stressed the importance of having good body mechanics and being able to relax behind the wheel. Now that we're comfy in the seat, we can focus on our mental approach to racing. Some people will tell you that being fast relies on physical conditioning like strength and endurance, or that being fast requires good reaction times. Yes, those things will help, but I promise you that 90% of your talent comes from what your racing headspace looks like. And I even have proof. This is Henri Pescarolo. He's driven in 33 races at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. He's won it four times. His last competition as a driver was in 1999 at the age of 57. He finished 8th in his class and 9th overall that year. In 1996, at 54, he finished 2nd in his class. And he's driving a prototype, which is a really demanding car. So at the ripened age of 57, his reaction times and physical conditioning were nowhere near the levels of the younger drivers, but he was still very, very quick. So, if you're out there beating yourself up, thinking that you'll never be competitive because you don't have fighter pilot reactions, you are feeding yourself lies. And today, I'm going to try to bring you to the truth. That truth is... The reason you're slow is because you're thinking too much. Before we can dive into the meat of this episode, we have to talk about one really important thing, and that's breathing. Between my time in the military and as a contractor, I had to learn how to manage some extremely stressful situations. It's not easy, and it requires some failure before you get it right. The first and biggest step I took in learning to cope with all that stress was breath control. Some of the older guys I worked with used this uh, box breathing method as their sort of go-to. It's a pretty simple process where you just imagine a box and you trace the outside of it in your head. So you go up the left side of the box, count to five while inhaling, across the top, count to five while holding at the top of your breath, and you go down on exhale, and across the bottom, Again, holding at the bottom of your breath, and you repeat this process. It's very simple, but it's very effective. And importantly, you repeat the exercise until you can do it as an automatic reaction to stress. You don't even really think about it. I've watched drivers at track days and in the sims talk about how they forgot to breathe during a particularly dicey drive in traffic. While not strictly true, a common response to stress is in fact shallow and rapid breathing. This raises your heart rate, your blood pressure, uh, and the stress hormones it releases will trap you in this sort of like feedback loop of stress and response that you can't maintain over the course of a race. So you need to train yourself to take those deep breaths. It will regulate your stress response, which will help you avoid driving consciously. Now that may sound strange. Why would I not want to be conscious of my driving? Uh, the reason is, is because it makes you really slow. When you're driving a car, on the highway or on the track, there are two parts of your brain at work. Your subconscious brain is performing the mechanical, physical act of driving, where your conscious brain is, hopefully, looking at things like traffic flow, stop signs, emergency vehicles, blah, blah, blah. They work better together, but the subconscious brain is capable of doing way, way more than we give it credit for. I'm sure you've had the experience of driving to work or school or wherever, Somewhere along your route, you lose track of time and you find yourself deciding, you know, what you want for dinner or, like, how many vacation hours you have saved up. Before you know it, you're at your destination and you don't really remember physically driving the car. That's because your subconscious was already doing that job. It had everything taken care of and as a result, it let your conscious mind drift off and dive into whatever thoughts came up. Letting your conscious mind drift and flow with whatever thoughts come up has a name, and it's called meditation. Or the more modern term for it is mindfulness. Think what you will, but I assure you that most professional drivers practice mindfulness on a daily basis and incorporate that into their racecraft. 
the conscious mind is too slow and overanalyzes too much for it to be the primary operator when driving a car. To paraphrase great rally driver Ari Vatanen, if you're thinking about how to take the next turn, you've probably already crashed. It's why if you take a driver, even a world champion, and ask them to turn a lap at a track they've never seen before, they'll be glacially slow at first. Their subconscious hasn't had time to be programmed on how to drive the track quickly. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm not a fan of the word focus when it comes to racing, because it gives a lot of people the wrong idea that racing drivers are out there thinking really hard about their lap when the complete opposite is true. They're slipping into a state where their subconscious is performing all the tasks that it's memorized through tons and tons of practice, and the conscious mind is making observations about where they can improve the next time they take that turn. The subconscious mind is great at turning a steering wheel or pressing a brake pedal. The mechanics of driving, really, really simple. Not easy, but simple. Just basic physics. The conscious mind trains the subconscious to do these things through repetition and experimentation. Conscious mind conducts, subconscious performs. That is real consistency. So, how do we get there? You already know the answer. It's practice. All else equal, a driver that's done 200 laps is going to have a very well-trained subconscious compared to one that's only done 10. They'll be smooth, they'll be consistent, and when they're smooth and consistent, their conscious mind will have an easier task of making those small adjustments after each repetition to squeeze out more and more time. The conscious mind doesn't have to stop and remind you or I guess remind itself, to break at the 150 board or to short shift in the fourth at coming out of turn eight. That happens on its own, I promise. Your subconscious mind is so good at this, with enough practice you can actually drive the track in your head. Max and Carlos here are driving around Barcelona in their imagination. Both of their imagined lap times are actually within two seconds of actual recorded laps. It's not a superpower, it's really just practice. As you repeat a task, the mental bandwidth required to perform it reduces over time. It becomes intuitive. Uh, more art than science, more dance than drill. There's a, a great quote from F1 legend Damon Hill. He says, uh, The first ever lap you do at Monaco seems to last for 30 seconds, but by the time you do the last lap of the race, it seems to take half an hour. Your brain has expanded its consciousness to the point where speed seems to slow and the track seems massive, which is exactly the state of mind you want to be in. Now what he's talking about there, uh, we've all probably experienced at some point, if you've ever spun or run off the track in the real world, you'll know that feeling where speed seems to slow. You don't quite realize just how fast you're going until you make a mistake, then suddenly everything seems to be going a little too fast. That's the switch between the two parts of your brain getting flipped. Are there other tools to use for this developmental process? Absolutely. When a driver starts to plateau, that is to say, you know, lap times are consistently within a few tenths of each other, they'll talk to a teammate, an engineer, look at telemetry, mess with the setup. And that's the beauty of racing. The perfect lap isn't really attainable, so you've always got something new to strive for. But if you're off the pace by a few seconds or more, a good setup isn't going to save you. You need to practice. The last aspect of mindfulness that I want to cover is confidence. If you're driving in a sim, you have the blessing of not needing to fear for your mortality on the racetrack. There are many, many drivers who have a big accident and never quite get up to pace again. In some cases, they never race again at all. We have no such concerns in sim racing. Its greatest strength is that level of accessibility. If you want track time at Lime Rock, you can do it. It could be 3 a.m. on a Saturday and your girlfriend's trying to sleep in the next room. Not a problem. Take advantage of that by practicing as much as you can and building your confidence. Getting really frustrated or dejected is a waste of time and it's a counter to that important level of accessibility that sim racing provides. If you start telling yourself that you're slow, that you'll never be as fast as those guys, then yes, all that wallowing and self-pity will guarantee you a permanent seat on the struggle bus. I'm going to strongly advise that anytime you have those thoughts, 
let them happen. Understand that they're stemming out of frustration and appreciate the fact that you care enough about getting better to feel disappointed. The key is to use that disappointment to adjust your expectations and goals. The only easy day was yesterday. The only turn you can take is the one right in front of you. Setting attainable goals for yourself is going to be the make or break aspect of building confidence. I don't care if you have to aim for something as simple as don't bend the car on this next turn. Set that goal. Practice it until you hit it reliably. Then set another goal. When you do hit your goals, do something for yourself. If you have a race where you place well simply by virtue of not being involved in turn one shenanigans, you did a good job. Some guy that's been doing sim racing every day for five years might set a fastest lap in quality, but nobody cares about your lap times if you're three laps down in P17 at the end of the race because your ego wrote a check your talent couldn't cash trying to make a pass work into the hairpin. There's just one more aspect of racing mentality that I want to tackle, and that's being assertive. Not aggressive. Aggressive means driving consciously, and we already know that means being slow and making mistakes. Being assertive is about racecraft. I've seen too many drivers surrender to the mindset that because they're not qualifying on the front row, they never will, and because of that, they just want to start at the back of the field and avoid being around all the other drivers. This is a huge disservice to yourself and to your competition. The point of motorsport is the sport. You can just enjoy casual motoring on a Sunday afternoon. The best racing is when a group of cars are fighting for position and the drivers have a chance to really push themselves. I'm not telling you to swerve and block people or get in the way of lead cars when you're lapped, but if it's for position, make the other driver work for it. If you just hand them the spot, you're taking away an opportunity for both of you to be better drivers. Most importantly, if you always shy away from a fight, you're going to train yourself to be passive and each time you end up getting mixed up with other cars, that stress response will just get worse. It's a really difficult pit to climb out of. Don't do that to yourself. Well, we need to wrap this video up. It is getting to be a pretty lengthy one, but as I stated, at the start, I think this is the most important video that I can make. Mentality is everything for a racing driver. You have to stay relaxed, you have to stop thinking so much, drive clean, drive smooth, drive consistent, always set new, small goals, be assertive, and allow yourself to compete even if you're not the fastest guy on the track. Practice all the time. And don't forget to breathe.